位好。呃，来欢迎姚晨。Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give the floor to Yao Chen. Take a seat. My name is Ju Xiaojun. I come from the Central Television CCTV News. I thought I would introduce you saying we have a mysterious lady here, but actually just now a lot of people stood in front of the door, so I asked around to see what kind of people were here and uh, CEOs and uh, executives and also foreign friends came here who are not so familiar with Yao Chen, this name. So I just give you some figure to see how influential Yao Chen is because I see a lot of Chinese friends here. Ladies and gentlemen, have you watched the movies and also the Weibo or the microblogs here? So she is in China. <laughs> okay, we still have some people raising their hands. Well, actually, say hello to everyone. Thank you all. I'm really flattered. So, Yao Chen has multiple identities, and uh, you're an actress. And uh, are you planning to take a video or um, MV? No, not in the near future. And also, you have a, another identity of the largest followers of Weibo, which is actually 70 million, 73 million followers. I think this is the top-notch level across the world. So back in 2009, you started your Weibo. Yeah, in September 2009, I had a friend working in Sina.com, and uh, she said to me, you can just play around on this. You can share with people what you thought. And have you remembered your first Weibo, your first post? I thought, uh, well, actually, my first Weibo was about selling dog food for one of my friends. And a lot of people think that actually I have a very good control over the emergent new technology. So please tell me this is your wrong way, Bo. Yes, for sure, yeah. Well, I would like to share with people some of my daily life. And uh, I don't play with Taobao or the Chinese Amazon. And uh, also, compared to people around me, I actually am a cliche. However, I really have a very natural knack for Weibo, the microblog. So have you ever experienced any important days when you decided that Weibo was not just a place to play around? Yes, yeah, for sure. At the very beginning, on Weibo, on this platform, I met with a lot of interesting people who are not in the movie industry, and they know a lot about other industries who can broaden your horizon. And at that time, it was just like a salon where people can discuss about everything. But one day, when Weibo opened to the public, when everybody can log upon your Weibo, and uh, I have been experienced pressure 
So actually, now you have 73 million followers. So what kind of meaning for this number? Well, actually, the 73 million, the number is not significant in itself. However, in the past few years, the development of microblog or the Weibo in China has a lot of things to say. At the very beginning, it was really peaceful. However, after a few years, you see that actually it can share with people a lot of information, like in the time of earthquake, you can provide the relief materials to a lot of people. And also, you can sell potatoes through Weibo. So I actually reposted some Weibo. And uh, I just found out that farmers' potatoes were sold out very quickly. So I was really happy to see the power of Weibo. And also, I also saw in my own eyes the significance, the power of Weibo. And all of a sudden, I thought Weibo was a very important platform. And uh, sometimes, I also experienced those kind of um, invasion of privacy. And actually, on Weibo, you can experience all kinds of people who are carrying the positive and negative energies. So on this platform, for you, you would like to share with people the positive energy, and which you just mentioned about the earthquake. In a Lu earthquake, you also posted some Weibo for the charity work, for the donation to those disaster-stricken areas. So how do you see the 73 million followers of your Weibo? Because this is really powerful. So how do you use this platform to do the charity work? Yeah, I started this charity work from reposting, because I just suddenly found out that the reposting can deal with a lot of things, can give a lot of solutions to the problems. And also, at the same time, I learned how to do it with a golden mean. Because at the very beginning, I just reposted the minute I saw some touching stories. However, after a few years, when I saw some stories, I would like to check if it's reliable, if it's true, then I would repost those Weibo. And also, I would like to see some people, they are in desperate need of the money for a surgery for a cancer. So at this time, I will repost all those Weibo because people will donate money to those people who are really in need. And also, if the donation is enough, the money is enough, I would just like to delete the Weibo. Because if you don't delete those Weibo, then a lot of people are still donating money for those people who have already got enough money. So I think this is a loss of resources. So actually, as a celebrity, and also you are the heroine for a lot of young people, and the icon of a lot of young people. So for this identity, what is your social responsibility? How do you feel that? Well, how to put it? I'm really lazy. When I became a celebrity, it really took me by surprise. I even thought I didn't want to be a celebrity. However, if I 
I'm a celebrity and I am entrusted with this kind of honor, with this responsibility. I always think that the power comes with responsibility. Responsibility. So as a celebrity, you should shoulder on new responsibilities. And it's really hard to describe. However, now I'm a mom. I have a son, and、uh, the responsibility is clearer and clearer. Because I really hope that my son is growing up in a better environment. So what I am interested in is more and more specific. For instance, some charity work for the fighting against children trafficking, and also the improvement of the water and air quality, and also the field visit of the UN High Commission for Refugees. And I would like to wait for my son to grow older, and I would like to take him on the field trips. Of the High Commission for Refugees, and you just mentioned that you had your son last year. And what is the biggest change in your personal life? And、uh, I think I'm more in courageous now because in the past I was really vulnerable and、um, weak. And、uh, now, as a mom, I think I showed a new responsibility, and I have a New life to take care about, so I'm more tolerant and more courageous. But I'm still learning to be a mom, and I think this is a long-term task. And also, you mentioned you are the goodwill ambassador identity for the UN High Commission for Refugees, and you had some field trips to Africa. And、uh, what did you see? In the past four years, with this identity of the goodwill ambassador, I had field trips to six areas. It is fair to say that、um, I was really touched and impressed by all those experiences. And today, I would like to say. The relationship between a country and an individual, because often when we talk about countries, we think it's very broad-based and a. However, if you just visit those refugees, and、uh, you can see that actually, country is a word. Involved deeply involved in their daily life, and I visited Manila, the Philippines, and one of the refugees was an agron agronomist from Somali. He's a Somali, and、uh, he went to the Philippines with very good ambition. However, during His further studies in the Philippines. There were some problems in his country, so he was stuck in the Philippines for four years. He's a very interesting person, and he even talked about the poems of China, and he also had a great passion for Earth. For soil, and、uh, um, he showed me the black earth in his own garden, and I thought actually for the Philippines, according to the laws, actually, as a person comes to the ten years during his or her stay in the Philippines, he or she can become. A citizen in the Philippines. However, this person had already been staying in Manila for 24 years. And his uh, uh, brothers and sisters have been killed by the rebellions, and、uh, 
there's no uh, relatives there. But the answer impressed me a lot. He said, uh, probably this afternoon or tomorrow I may fly back. So the question is, uh, the shows how he feels about his home, home country. It's no longer a location on the earth, but also a life, his past and his future. So it's everything. And also mention that uh, in the future, one day when your child grow up, you want to you know, visit uh, the refugee camp together. So what do you want to learn from that visit? She said, as I learned from these visits, uh, I'm a celebrity, I'm an actress, I have more opportunities to visit other countries, uh, visit other corners in the world. I've been to New Zealand. I've seen the the landscape, you know, by God, and I've been to the festival, the fashion festival, and see those uh, models uh, in the fancy clothes. Also been to the poorest places like uh, the refugee camp in, in the Ethiopia, in Africa, and uh, I have seen the the vulnerable human being like uh, ants in the earth. Pre I feel that it's kind of invisible hand of feet or destiny or, or destiny, you know, pu pushing me uh, hard. So I hope in the future I can visit these places again with my child, the beautiful and the poor. Uh, of the life, of the dark side of life. I hope that uh, my child can be exposed uh, to both sides of life. I uh, uh, hope your child uh, will be learning what you are learning. And back to your career, back to your principles, and uh, what have you learned from your experiences? What are the changes uh, caused to you? She said, You never thought of this? <laughs> Just to live your day? She said, uh, probably compared with what I, who I was four years ago, I think I'm a better now. I'm a, this is a better me. And uh, years ago, I kind of more egocentric. I want to make my life better, you know, care about my own family. But I never thought of uh, the responsibilities and the, uh, as a public uh, uh, celebrity. But now, different. Uh, he said, uh, as uh, a public celebrity with big influence, especially among the young people, uh, it's, it's a matter of choice. It's doing it or not. Uh, to many people, they just do what they have to do. and. Uh, take the others as the second important uh, category. They will not uh, be pushed ahead. Well, you are doing and what you're doing. As I know some other celebrities, they have their other concerns, even complaints. They have been working hard in their own career to be a good model in their own career. They're also trying to reach out uh, to spread uh, the positive influence among other people. However, they may lose their own personal space in this process. Uh, and because you are a celebrity, other people care about you, everything about you, your marriage, your, your birth. And even if you say nothing, uh, there might be other reports. Have you think of you know concern if you depressed or if you sad about it or upset? She said yes many times, <laughs> but you know I'm 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 so quickly I'm adjusting myself. I can be more acceptive. In it's pretty much like uh, there's uh, no such a, a word like a sacrifice in my dictionary, in the adult dictionary. It is your choice. You you face it, you accept it. Uh, you don't, uh, you know, grumpy. Uh, to, this is what you have chosen. And this is what uh, after you have chosen it. 
So as today, this is a new champions as the title of this forum, and uh, I, I might be other words like uh, the young leaders. So no matter how you interpret, uh, you are one of the top of the young people in China. And from your own understanding, from yourself, or from your own career, the the young leaders, what should be the young leaders? What are the attributes of the young leaders in China? She said, uh, I think the there should be a new driving force each of the time. And I think we are happy people in this time, in this era. The young champions, in my understanding, should be person with uh, personal integrity, charms, uh, responsibility, with uh, with courage to be act uh, correctly and uh, should be a pioneer to lead others as influence in terms of influence and uh, you know, what I want to influence most is my mom but I I fail to do so <laughs> I cannot influence her in my own will so if I am to say how to be a good uh, leader I think must be make yourself a better person before you try to make others better. Now we are going to close this interview, and before we conclude, since you mentioned your mother, I'm not sure if your mother will watch this program. So, what do you want to say most to your mom? Let me share with us, since you mentioned your mom here. My word, my greetings. Less salt in your cooking? <laughs> no, no, it's not stop, not about cooking, or food. So, no. So, what do you want to say to your family? No, we may pause others later. You know, I have high expectation. I hope my family will be safe, healthy, and grow old with me slowly and gradually. Now, this is a common wish of everyone, and this is very, you know, very true of everyone. So what do you want to say to your fans? I, I think gratitude is the only thing I want to say. Thank you very much. And uh, what do you want to say to the Chinese people, to the audience in this room? <laughs> Sorry to feel sorry that uh, here only half an hour to to say fully myself is to express myself in half an hour it's really difficult but since I'm here today I hope that I have not disappointed you all turn you down <laughs> give me something solid and interesting and go back to what you are the, the TV uh, divorce lawyer that you played. Uh, what do you want to say to the foreign people, foreign guests? <laughs> Watch my <laughs> program. <laughs> I hope, she said. I hope. Now, start, um, open your micro blog account and uh, see me and check me out uh, on micro blog, the Weibo. And uh, please, uh, you know. <laughs> Follow me on my micro blog. Thank you very much for coming here. And also, I'd like to thank all the audience in this room coming here today. Thank you.